This is Co-op HD1 HD3 Hornsby, radio for people, not for profit. Welcome to Volumes, the Austin Public Library radio show. Each week, we explore how your library is more than books. The library is knowledge, technology, and inspiration for our community. Hey, I'm your host today, Kanya Lyons, and today we're going to talk about moving to the new Central Library. For those of you who are not yet aware, the Austin Public Library is opening a new Central Library right on Ladybird Lake at 710 West Cesar Chavez, right where the lake and Shoal Creek meet. And the new Central Library will open its doors to the public on Saturday, October 28th at 12 noon. We are all super excited. Right now, as we speak, library staff are working diligently to get books and other materials moved from the old location, the Fox Central Library, to the new Central Library. And moving an entire library is almost like moving a mountain. So we have invited Warehouse Supervisor Mike Dvorak and Librarian Betsy Blanche onto our show to give us a little insight into the process. Welcome, guys. Welcome. Thanks. How's it going? So um, how were you guys able to break this monumental task down and kind of create a workflow for this process? Uh, can we start with you, Betsy? Sure. Um, well, like many good things in life, um, a lot of the ideas I got came from a book. What? Um, yeah, I know. The American Library Association has a book on this topic. Um, so after some research, finding it and reading through it, which is, this is the one time I got to actually read at work, just to break down that librarian hey. stereotype. I was able to read this book on the job and it <laughs> kind of gives you these spreadsheets, which are very elaborate and impressive, and some tools to use. Um, so it's really a matter of kind of measuring all of your collection and divvying it up along the shelves that we have in the new building. So it's a, it's a big task, but breaking it down into a lot of smaller pieces just kind of helped us figure it out, map it out little by little. So I always thought you did that all by yourself. I didn't realize you actually <laughs> used a book for that. So. I did. Of course. Yeah. I'm pretty good with spreadsheets, but this is like upper level stuff. So, <laughs> Awesome. So uh, what about on your end, Mike? Uh, basically, I mean, it's been years of thinking about it and planning it out. I mean, really, I mean, I always wanted to do it in-house from the, I mean, when we first started building the, you know, the, the building and uh, now that we're actually doing it, it's just, uh, you know, it's amazing that it's actually happening now. So it's just... Uh, all those meetings we had, all those, uh, we did trial runs, you know, you know, took, loaded up the book carts, the moving carts, and, and figured out how long it would take us to do it. And, and now it's like, you know, it's happening for real, and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's progressing really well. So. Mm-hmm. And Mike is particularly well-suited for this job because not only does he work at the warehouse and he has all this knowledge of the system, but he used to be a page. Yeah, so, so he actually, like, knows how big books I'm are. very familiar <laughs> with the Dewey Decimal System, so, yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. I didn't even realize that. We're going to have to have you back on the show another time just to talk (laughs) about you. Um, But today we are talking about the Austin Public Library's new central library, which will be opening in October. Uh, If you're just joining us, this is Volumes, the Austin Public Library radio show on Co-op 91.7 FM and streaming on koop.org. And show details are available at library.austintexas.gov slash volumes. We're here talking with Mike Dvorak, who's a warehouse supervisor at the Austin Public Library, and Betsy Blanche, who is a reference librarian, um, although both of them do a whole lot more than their titles imply. <laughs> uh, and what they're working on right now is this move. So how many books are actually being moved total from just the books from Falk to the new Central Library? Mm, just books. Well, there's about 170,000 nonfiction books and then another 60, 70,000 fiction plus all the genre and world languages. So wow. um, about 200,000 books. Uh, oh well, over that, yeah, 250. So <laughs> wow. a little bit bigger yeah. than a house move, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. So how many, um, how, many, how many books have y'all moved so far? Uh, we've moved about half of the nonfiction collection, so we're right around 80,000, 90,000. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So how, tell, can y'all explain um, how you actually broke down um, the collection? So you have how many cartloads that are going to be moved total? I mean, uh, between like just for uh, fifth and sixth floors, which, which are the nonfiction, we figure about four for 75 or 500 mm-hmm. uh, moving carts, uh, and we moved about half of those. and. We're on sixth floor now, so um, like I said, it's going faster than we thought it would because we actually have the dock. We don't have to share the dock with furniture installers. It was just sheer dumb luck that we got that 
they're moving in Monday, so next week it'll be a different story. But right now the dock is ours, and we can get moved up, you know, move as much as we can. So. And these book, these these cartloads that we're talking about, these are not your ordinary library book cart that you see inside of the library. These are enormous. Yeah, these are special ones that we we purchased, and and uh, I actually thought about building some because we had <laughs> some leftover plywood at the warehouse. I thought, you know, years ago, I thought I could actually build some of these like a little bit at a time, and by the time we move, maybe I have enough. But I bet you could have. Uh, yeah, but I did never have the time. So it's like, <laughs> so I looked online and I found several companies actually sell these, and so. Um, we bought these because we're going to be using these on, on future moves when we do a branch relocation or renovation. We can just put the books straight on the book carts. And we don't have to box things up, and it'll make it a lot faster. You don't have to be lifting boxes. It's a lot safer. All mm-hmm. you're doing is pushing book carts. So we'll be using these for quite a few years. Right. So They're like four feet wide and almost as tall as me. Yeah, so they fit, have eight, eight shelves on them. So, yeah, it's <laughs> a lot of books go on them. So, yeah. If anybody is curious, there's some video on the library's YouTube channel that'll give you an idea of all this stuff we're talking about here. So um, how many of those of those carts have you guys moved so far, those big giant carts that we're talking about? So we'd, for a fifth floor, we did a little over 200, I think. And mm-hmm. so far for sixth floor, is about 120. So oh. oh, my goodness. Yeah, I know we did like Things 60 yesterday fast. and 60 today. And we're moving at a really fast pace. Right. So, and we're yeah. kind of a, ahead of schedule is my understanding. We're ahead, but right. you know, next week it'll slow us down because the dock will be taken up by the furniture people. So, Oh, that's yeah. correct. So I'm glad we got a good jump on this. So right. yeah, we, we need that time. So we're Absolutely. running it like a first time marathon or just like so fast at the beginning. <laughs> and then we're going to maybe have to slow down a yeah, little bit and then we get to the definitely. second part. Yeah. So what about the other media besides books? Do we know uh, how much do we have of like DVDs and CDs and other types of... Right. We've got about 14,000 DVDs plus Blu-ray in the collection. Um, There are something like 16,000 music CDs and um, not to mention the CD books. So audiobooks on CD is, I think, around 5,000 or so. And wow. all of those, those are too kind of small and slippery to go on the big carts. So they are going to go in these plastic bins. Yeah, our, our, our regular delivery containers, will put oh, those right. in there at, at towards the, you know, the end and get those out. So, so yeah. it's like a whole nother kind of system that right. other people have worked out. Yeah. And we're moving those last, we're moving, like we're, we're keeping the library open as long as we can. And the services right. that people use the most often are being available as long as we possibly can. And we're just going to shut down the Fox Central Library for about one, little more than one month total yeah. uh, to, to move those final, final things. That's why we started on the third floor. The third floor of the library, the Fox Central Library is now closed for anyone that doesn't know. Uh, and that is our where we used to house our nonfiction collection. And right. it sounds like most of it is now over at the yeah, new Central Library much, yeah. Yeah, so. <laughs> waiting for us. And that's worked out really well. So mm, That's great. Um, so then I'm just curious. Uh, so complete total if we count up all the books all the media how many items are we talking about that we actually have to physically move from the fox central to the new central library it was a what was it 300 or yeah it's about three hundred fifty thousand. so feel free again to stack up on some fiction books before we close the building so we don't have to move those ourselves <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, right <laughs> please and thank you um yeah it's a, it's about three hundred fifty thousand. Oh all my gosh. told yeah Um, Plus, there are some things in storage that we've either set aside because we're out of room in our current building or are brand new for a special collection that we'll have in the building um, or just new things that we want to be shiny and new when we open the doors. So there are some boxes involved, unfortunately. Yeah, not too many, though. (laughs) Yeah. I'm excited about the the new items for the collection. I know the... the People who order those items have been diligently planning and uh, purchasing things for this new shiny library. Um, and so as far as like, so 350,000 items, I did the math with about 600 cartloads. It's about 585 items per cartload. And you guys are pushing so those things around <laughs> yeah. like it's nothing. I was so impressed. Well, you know, for the nonfiction on third floor, we didn't load the top row because we tried one our one of our trial runs loading the top row and it just they were just too heavy, so oh. we took off the top row. Those books are way bigger than the yeah, non, they are. Than yeah. the fiction. The fiction, yeah. So uh, we did that and it just worked out, you know, a lot better. So <laughs> good. Yeah. yeah, you don't want to hurt anybody. Well, so uh, we're going to talk a lot more about this in just a little bit. Um, 
For those that are just joining in, this is Volumes, the Austin Public Library Show, and you're listening to Co-op 91.7 FM, and it streams at koop.org. Um, we are about to hear about the summer reading program and some of the other really awesome events that are taking place at libraries throughout town. And then after those announcements, we're going to finish this amazing discussion uh, with our warehouse supervisor, Mike Dvorak, and librarian, Betsy Blanche. Um, and we're talking about moving to the new Central Library. So, My name is Blair Parsons, and I'm a reference librarian at the Falk Central Library. Each week, I highlight a few programs for adults happening around the Austin Public Library. Our full list of programs may be found on the library's events calendar. Thursday, August 24th, in conjunction with the Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service, the Millwood Branch Library hosts Eat Smart, Live Strong, Fun activities for older adults will be offered, as well as discussion about easy ways to make smart choices about food and exercise. Eat Smart, Live Strong is 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock, Thursday, August 24th at the Millwood Branch Library. Night Crafters, the library's monthly craft program for adults, returns to the Ruiz Branch Library Monday, August 28th. This month's craft is bike crafts, items made from bike parts and made for bikes. Night Crafters meets the last Monday of each month at the Ruiz Branch Library. The next meeting is Monday night, August 28th, from 6.30 to 8.30. Hey there, Austin. Teen Program Specialist Michael Harley from the downtown Falk Central Library here. I had the great pleasure this summer of seeing some of the library's talented teen patrons show off some amazing performance skills at our voiceover workshop during the Teen Summer Reading Program. The library has a venue for all kinds of talents to take the stage. Running through September of 2017, every last Saturday of the month, the Carver Branch hosts the Read It, Sing It, Let Us Hear It talent show from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. With a full mic setup, patrons share poetry, music, comedy, improv, theater, and performance art. Talents of all levels are welcome. Sign up starts at noon, and each talent slot has a maximum time of 15 minutes. The next Read It, Sing It, Let Us Hear It talent show is July 29th from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. at the Carver Branch. More details for these and additional programs can be found at library.austintexas.gov slash events. This is Ann Minner, Managing Librarian at the Old Quarry Branch. I get to highlight some information for children this week. Story times begin again system-wide next month, and we will be offering all sorts of programs to serve the families of Austin. One of our favorite programs is Pajama Storytime. These story times take place after the 9 to 5 workday, so working parents can attend with their children. These evening family story times feature stories, songs, rhymes, games, crafts, and other activities for all ages in a relaxed atmosphere where pajamas are welcome. I have great news. For the rest of August, Miss Patty will be hosting Pajama Storytime at the Manshack Road Branch on Thursday evenings at 6.30 p.m. That's Pajama Storytime at the Manshack Road Branch on Thursday evenings at 6.30 p.m., August 24th and 31st. Details are at library.austintexas.gov slash storytimes. The promo you're about to hear is a collaboration between the Austin Public Library's Rooster Teeth's Elizabeth Maxwell and teen library patron Aaliyah. But soft, what light through yonder window breaks? Hmm, so you're a Romeo? Is it my lady? Oh, is it my love? Juliet, the sun? Close. My friends just call me Julie. This is my first time reading Shakespeare. I know not of what she speaks. I like the way you speak. I could really get into this stuff. Oh, speak again, bright angel. Yep, I could definitely get used to this. Looking for an adventure? Your Austin Public Libraries have pages and pages to fall into. And with the summer reading program, there's even more to explore. With exciting events and cool prizes, adventures begin with the book this summer at the Austin Public Libraries. More details at www.austinsummerreading.org. The promo you're about to hear is a collaboration between the Austin Public Libraries, Rooster Teeth's Elizabeth Maxwell, and teen library patron, Cade. You're not a very good dancer. Oh, sorry, beauty. I'm trying what I never learned. This is supposed to be romantic. Uh, I mean, I can't waltz, but I can twerk like a boss. Maybe you should have read a book on dancing before reading my story. Hey, I'm doing my best. Best, all right? All right, all right. You don't have to be such a beast about it. 
Looking for an adventure? Your Austin Public Libraries have pages and pages to fall into. And with the summer reading program, there's even more to explore with exciting events and cool prizes. Adventure begins with a book this summer at the Austin Public Libraries. More details at www.austinsummerreading.org. You're listening to Volumes, the Austin Public Library radio show on Co-op 91.7 FM and KOOP.org. Radio for people, not for profit. Hey, welcome back. Uh, we're here in the studio talking about the new Central Library uh, and the move that we're currently in the middle of. And we've got uh, warehouse supervisor Mike Dvorak and librarian Betsy Blanche. I know I said your name wrong. I tried, though. That was good. That was good. <laughs> so <laughs> welcome back, y'all. Um, so... Uh, about how many people does it take to move the collection? Like, how many people do you guys have rotating through? Hundreds? <laughs> no, closer to about 20, 25 people in total. Wow. We, we have three teams. One team at the current Central, um, Melissa and Teresa are in charge of that, actually getting the books off the shelf into our moving carts. And then you have Betsy and Randy at, uh, at the new Central, getting it off the carts onto the shelves. And then you have my team who's moving stuff back and forth. So it's... Uh, Wow. It's, yeah, we're actually doing it with, with, you know, not as many people as you would think. So Right. It takes a village, but a sort of small village. Right, yeah. It's mind-blowing. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, let's get into some touchy-feely stuff. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what's been the biggest challenge of this experience? Uh, That's a good doubt. question. Uh, <laughs> Fear, no. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I think, go ahead, Mike. I was just going to say, I mean, we've spent so much time planning this out. I mean, meeting so many times and, and trying to work through every possible scenario and any possible obstacle. And it's actually had gone a lot smoother than I thought it would. So, yeah. I think waiting for it to be actionable was right. stressful because yeah, then there's all this time to be like, is this, is this in, like fraught from the beginning <laughs> i've measured the collection with literally a string and then i've just decided how much shelving that's going to take and so all of that time to wait for things to move forward was uh was interesting yeah, yeah. and it sounds like all that time to plan has paid off in the sense that we're we're if you know on schedule if not ahead of schedule with, with this has, moving process mm -hmm. yeah i mean we did you know we did trial runs we you know did mock moves to see, you know, if anything, any surprises, what, you know, would, would come our way. And, and we learned a lot by those. So, um, you know, it's just uh, because of all that planning and all that time we took to, to you know, figure things out. Like I said, it's, it's so far, it's been, you know, it's been really, really smooth. So, What would you say y'all are most proud of uh, uh, in, as far as this move is concerned? I think just to be able, being able to do it ourselves. I mean, you know, it's just, uh, um, you know such a monumental task you wouldn't mm -hmm. think that you know um it's true staff could do that but staff has been so enthusiastic and the energy level has been so high that everybody just it's just you know really gung-ho about getting it done so even in this heat yeah, yeah exactly yeah it's been a good kind of project too because it's a lot of divisions working together and it's been it's just been really cool to work with people i don't normally work with um yeah. directly and have everyone on board working towards this goal whether a lot of people aren't actually moving the books but all of these back-end catalog things had to get done by somebody security and facilities had to make changes so we could close the third floor so basically every division in the library has had something to do with the move already it's true yeah and people seem really like enthused from from what I can tell, like they're doing it with joy and, and you know, excitement. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like you try to hold them back and you can't. I mean, they're <laughs> yeah. just moving so fast. It's like, you know, I mean, they're just so anxious to get this done and, and they're taking such pride, uh, you know, and uh, their intensity level. Like I said, it's just through the roof. So That's awesome. So is there anything that you thought would be really hard or difficult that turned out to be a little easier than you expected? I think just the fact that we were able to get so used of the dock has made a huge, mm -hmm. huge impact. And like, and like I said, everybody's energy level. I mean, when we did our trial runs, you know, we did timing and figure out how long it would take to do certain things. And when it came time to do the actual move, those numbers were completely destroyed. I mean, everybody just did it it's, it's so much quicker than we, had, we did before. And so, and I didn't expect that, you know, I should have. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, I thought there'd also just be more little hiccups, right? Like places where the books don't quite all fit the way we thought. And there have been a few of those, but they're pretty easily corrected. And then (laughs) we're kind of doubling our pace. Yeah. So for those of you just joining us, this is Volumes, the Austin Public Library radio show on Co-op 91.7 FM and streaming at koop.org. Um, details about this show are available at library.austintexas.gov slash volumes. And today we have the pleasure of having Mike Dvorak, warehouse supervisor at the library, and a reference librarian, Betsy Blanche. She, they both also do tons more than just that, but those are their titles. And uh, we're talking about this monumental move from the downtown Fox Central Library, which currently still sits open at 8th and Guadalupe Street. And we're moving on down the road to 710 West Cesar Chavez, which sits uh, right across from Lady Bird Lake, right adjacent to Shoal Creek. It is incredibly beautiful. I mean, the building, the location, everything. I'm so psyched. So um, I'm curious, like, what is y'all's favorite thing about the building? The new building. I mean, for me, I like the rooftop garden. I mean, I think that's just the coolest thing ever. You know, I never expected to see that. And it's, uh, you go up there and you have, you know, trees and plants up there. I mean, on a rooftop, I was just, just kind of blew my mind when they did that. So that's my favorite thing too. Yeah. Like okay. the yeah. live oak tree. Yeah. And, I mean, I just want to spend every break up there if they it's let amazing. me. <laughs> yeah. And then of course the views from up there is just mm-hmm. uh, outstanding. So yeah, I mean, pretty much you'd have to own a condo, you know, to get a view like yes. that anywhere else yes. in Austin. I mean, pretty <laughs> right. much. Yeah, it's a lot dreamier than our current building, right? It's so yes. full of sunlight and from anywhere you can see out a window. Uh, in the current building, maybe you haven't been up to the third floor in a while, but you have to really try to look out a window. <laughs> you have to like go right up to it and kind of squat down and look out to see anything. And it's mostly county buildings, which are great. We, they do good work. But, Absolutely. Um, but yeah, and the fifth and sixth floors of New Central, you just look around and it's this beautiful view of the lake and... Um, yeah, it's just sort of a place you want to go and daydream and read some books yeah. and just spend time. It's super inspiring. The other things that I'm really excited about, like the reading porches, those are really mm-hmm. cool, incredible. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and the and the view from those is slightly yes. different, but yeah. no less impressive. Yeah. <laughs> um, what else? There's so many good and interesting things. Like the I've heard rumor of a dance floor is that is that true (laughs) is there really a dance floor? there is sort of a dance floor there's an area on the sixth floor right by the the rooftop garden that people can reserve for weddings so i think that's where the phrase dance floor came from it's a nice big open room that will have seating but um otherwise yeah i might bust a move there before we open (laughs) cool yeah right now we're staging our, our moving carts in that area so Staff are kind of dancing around, getting yeah. stuff on the on the shelves. So, yeah. <laughs> and then, are, like, are there any like collection innovations that I'm trying to think? I know we have like a local uh, music area, and we have um, there's going to be a special area where we're going to display the puppets that are made by Literature Live, right, which is yeah. the library's very own puppetry troupe. Um, there will be and the new um, local collection, which will focus on um, Austin and Central Texas authors. Um, oh, nice. I think that's been sort of expanded beyond the original concept um, to its benefit. It was going to just be sort of local food and film and mm-hmm. music, which are great things. But now we're kind of talking more about people who write novels here yeah. and in the area or have lived here and have written. So um, that'll be a neat little collection on the fourth floor. Oh, great. Right by the reading room, which is another great feature. Perfect. Cool. And so the reading room is, is inside, and that's what's distinctive about it from, the say, the reading porches. Right. Because in the summer, nobody wants to be outside no, no, no. <laughs> right. for very long. Just the amount of spaces for people to be and study and collaborate are so much better in this building. Um, all the shared learning spaces in that reading room are going to be really advantageous, I think, to everybody. Yeah, so the shared learning rooms, those are really unique. It's like um, a room with a big giant screen and people mm-hmm. can have like meetings. You can swipe your PowerPoint from your phone or your device onto the screen or I don't know if you can swipe it, but I think that there's a way to get stuff from your right. <laughs> your device onto the screen and have you know a presentation or a workshop or some sort of a... right. Um, book club meeting. I mean, any, there's a million possibilities, right. yeah, but the, there are lots of space. 12 of those, right? 
It's quite a few. And, the, you know, the technology in this building is just amazing. So it's just really cutting edge. So. Right. Yeah, there are, I think, over 50 screens. There are computers. Like, there. oh, there's self-check machines with... Uh, with uh, MacBooks and iPads and Chromebooks. Mm -hmm. All kinds of portable devices, depending on your fancy. Right. <laughs> right. And there's even some little ones uh, that are for younger kids to, to learn on that are educational. Um, and those are for checkout in the library, which is pretty cool. And they don't, I mean, people can just stick in their library card information and whoop, out, right. out yep. comes a, a device. All this, I mean, I'm, a, I'm amazed at the, the technology um, and all the different stuff in this building. Um, well, we're getting kind of towards the end of this discussion. So I have um, a question about, so originally we were going to, we considered the option of paying movers, which is what most sane libraries yes, yes, would no. do. I think most main libraries pay Underachievers. That's, main, what I that's what I meant, main. <laughs> <laughs> so, but we're actually doing it ourselves with a team of 20 to 25 people. So right. how much are we, like, how much money are we saving the library uh, uh, or the city lot, of Austin? Quite a lot, you know. I mean, I had been petitioning for us to do it in-house, I mean, from the inception. I mean, since they started building. Uh, the building and and uh everybody was telling me i was insane it's like don't <laughs> hire the yeah. professionals don't do this it's just too huge a, a job to do it in-house but i felt it was too huge a job to, not to do in-house i mean there, there's too many moving parts to this too many factors to consider scheduling i mean who better than library staff to actually get it done the right way and on yes. time so right so yeah we saved quite a bit of money you know um by by doing it ourselves so yeah. I heard I heard the figure like uh, a quarter million dollars. Yeah, we did get around. a price tag for that. And, and of course, when we saw that, my boss, who had been telling me to get, you know, get somebody to do it. And he's like, so, that. so do you still think you can do it in house? I'm like, <laughs> yes, we can do it. So I wrote up a proposal, said everything we were going to do, what we needed, how much it would cost, which is practically pennies. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's like, OK, do it. So. Mike even came up with a plan in case the elevator was broken, but he's never shared that with anyone. No, I'll, I'll, I'll take that with me. So, yeah, I'm sorry. No. I don't want to say it's, it's so insane, but uh, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. It would work, though. It would work. <laughs> well, uh, so is there anything else that either one of you would like to share as we get to the end of this interview? Like one last little thing about the, about the move? I just can't wait to get the public in the building and exploring yeah. it and appreciating the views and getting access back to the collection and seeing all the new features and enjoying the old ones. I'm just excited to have it be fully running. It's going to be a fascinating place to be. So, yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm super psyched. Well, thank you guys so much for, for coming Thanks. and chewing the fat with me about this sure. exciting move to the new Central Library. Um, so for people that are interested, um, the new Central Library will open its doors to the public on Saturday, October 28th at 12 noon. Um, and in the meantime, we are moving books and materials and things as such. Um, I want to thank our hardworking volunteer, Federico Pacheco, and we want to invite everyone to stay tuned to 91.7 FM and KOOP.org for Rock and Roll Pest Control, which is high octane rock, metal, and punk music. Uh, this is Kanye Lyons signing off. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to Volumes, the Austin Public Library radio show. Special thanks to our producer, DJ Harris, and to the musicians who composed and performed our original theme song, Andrew Noble on violin, Kirk Duvall on guitar, and Mike Wheat on percussion. And thanks to you, our listeners. Volumes, the Austin Public Library radio show, airs Wednesday afternoons at 2.30 on Co-op 91.7 FM and koop.org. If you catch us mid-show, full episodes and other details can be found at library.austintexas.gov volumes.